Welcome back, everybody. Well, it's been a while, but we're going to dive back into epic rap battles of history. Uh, today, we're going to take a look at Shaka Zulu versus Julius Caesar. Uh, in the coming days, this week, just to give you a heads up about what else is coming, uh, I'm finalizing uh, my script uh, with my research on Reconstruction, so you can expect a Forgotten History episode on Reconstruction later this week. Also, uh, Wednesday, day after tomorrow, we're going to begin a multi-part reaction series to the history of the Ottoman Empire in Turkey. Uh, it's an area of history I know very little about, so I'm excited to learn, and I look forward to I know we have fans uh, who live in that part of the world. I'm looking forward to hearing your perspective because I'm sure you know a lot more about that history than I do. So I'm excited to hear that as well. Also, I'm putting up a vote over on Patreon for all of our patrons, regardless of level, uh, and to what our next reaction should be after the Turkey series. So let me know your thoughts on that by voting right now. And let's dive into Shaka Zulu versus Julius Caesar. <laughs> <laughs> so, a couple of things there, and, and I'll admit right up front, I don't know nearly as much about Shaka Zulu as I know about uh, Julius Caesar, so I'm going to probably get more references related to Julius Caesar than I do about Shaka, but I can remember as a kid watching a TV series on Shaka Zulu that was really, really good, and I remember even as a kid just thinking it was really well done. I know Shaka lives in the early part of the 1800s. Uh, he's, in a lot of ways, kind of considered the the father of uh, what would come later, the power of the Zulu tribe, uh, all the way up to uh, kind of when they hit their height of their power in the Anglo-Zulu War. And so uh, that great victory that the Zulu have over the British at the Battle of uh, Islan Luana uh, is thanks in large part to something that this guy did 60, 70 years earlier in innovating and kind of um, updating the tactics. They came up with this famous kind of what they called the bullhorn tactic. It was a particular way of drawing the enemy in and then encircling him and hitting him on both flanks. And it was used as it, at Islan Luana uh, to defeat the British there. Obviously, they had 10 times the number, so that didn't hurt either. But um, it talks about Cleopatra in Africa. Uh, Julius Caesar very famously has this relationship with Cleopatra. She's Cleopatra the seventh, technically. Uh, and like many who came before her, she was married to her brother. Uh, in fact, you want to look at a weird looking family tree. Look at Cleopatra's ancestors, because basically she has like four ancestors <laughs> all the way back through her family tree. It's like the same inbreeding over and over. It's multiple generations of siblings marrying each other and cousins marrying each other. Uh, it's amazing to me that Cleopatra came out normal at all through all that inbreeding. Uh, but she has a child that she says belongs to Caesar. Uh, they called him Caesarian. And he was most likely killed around the age of 17 on orders of um, Caesar Augustus, uh, Octavian, when he came to power. You talk a lot of shit for a man wearing a diaper. I heard you had poison spit. Where was it in this cipher? Because all I hear is threats from a brute with no discipline. And I'm ruling over you like a boot full of my citizens. So a boot, boot full of citizens. So he's obviously talking about Italy because it looks like a boot, the whole thing. Now he talks about no discipline from uh, Shaka Zulu. But honestly, that's what Shaka brought to the Zulu that they didn't have before was organization and discipline uh, and kind of modernizing as much as possible, uh, as much as you can modernize, you know, people who are very much living kind of in the Stone Age as far as their uh, their weapons go and things like that. But he really did kind of modernize their tactics. They think you should take your cow skin shield and hide under it. You're fucking with the most triumphant third of the triumvirate. I'm first to the Empire and last of the Republicans and hunting you accompany my legions of my country. Oh. So a bunch of things there he refers to the, you know, uh, the best third of the triumvirate. Uh, Caesar was part of this triumvirate with uh, Pompey Magnus. Uh, and with Crassus, who uh, both were really considered to be much more important. Crassus was like the richest guy in Rome. Pompey was Rome's greatest general. Caesar was kind of the afterthought of the three, but he's the one everybody remembers the most now. Uh, but it certainly wasn't that way at the time. Um, 
and uh, he talks about being the last of the Republicans because Caesar becomes a dictator at the end of his life. It's why he gets murdered by the by the uh, Senate. Uh, and after him follows yet another civil war, another triumvirate. And in the end, they end up with an empire in the form uh, of the first emperor, who is uh, Caesar Augustus. Who has my kidnappers if I'm just a shit talker? Doc J, dunk on it like boom shakalaka. So don't go rattling your sticks at me. If I wanted to Shakespeare, I'd waggle my biography. <laughs> I don't know if it's a biography of Julius Caesar by William Shakespeare, but he did have kind of an autobiography. A lot of what we know about Caesar's life and especially about his campaigns in places like Gaul comes from his own writing, which you need to take with a grain of salt because obviously he's writing in such a way to build himself up and kind of create the legend of Caesar. So he probably fudged a lot of things, but you know, to the victor, the victor gets to tell the story. Your play. Tell me, how does it end? Oh yes, you can stab many times by your friends So what you gonna do with your Roman sword? When the lines of your legions get caught by the horns of the Zulu so there he refers to the horns of the Zulu and and again they had this kind of bullhorn formation that I talked about earlier and that was really what the Zulu were known for and it's believed that Shaka was the one who implemented that. Right, so as a reference to Caesar salad there, uh, the Zulu were known for their speed and uh, one of the reasons why uh, when word comes at Rourke's Drift, and again, this is 60 years after Shaka's time, um, at Rourke's Drift, uh, the reason that they didn't just run is because they knew they couldn't outrun the Zulu. The Zulu were known for how quickly they could move uh, across the plains. They would cross incredible distances in a short period of time and then still arrive ready to fight. Now, I do find it interesting that he gives Caesar a hard time about having been murdered by his friends because Shaka was assassinated by his own brothers. Uh, so, you know, really not much better of an ending. I ride the hyena, cause I'm going to laugh. I'll pave roads with the bones of your goat herding ass. Cross my front lines, I'll drop back and spank you in the chest. Then I'll decimate your horn. You can't outflank the best. Let your reserves come at me, my ballistas contact me. Really? When I take, hey! I'll always keep my whole crew. Hey! Cause there's no use in murdering you and your heathen. You can grow my wheat for me after you're beaten. <laughs> uh, so, I mean... The Zulu live much further south. They were in South Africa, but a lot of the grain supply for the Roman Empire came from Egypt. Uh, they relied very heavily on that. In fact, that was one of the reasons why in the aftermath of Caesar, when they had this, uh, another triumvirate with... Um, uh, I can't forget who it was, but it's it's Octavian who becomes Caesar Augustus. It's Mark Antony. Uh, and there was a third guy. His name's escaping me at the moment, but he was almost kind of, again, like an afterthought. Um but uh, Mark Antony starts withholding the grain supply from the Romans. Um, and that's kind of the trigger that causes the war between Antony and Octavian. There were a lot of other factors, but that was one of the things that brings that situation to a head uh, is the, the withholding of grain supply, hoping you know, for more money. Hold war! Hold war! Um, Joke you know, honestly, I don't feel like either one of them did particularly better than the other, and I'm sure... I have no doubt I missed some references. Please let me know the things that I didn't mention. I'm sure there are quite a few, like little things that I just don't know the deep enough history, especially for Shaka to be able to um, to catch all of those things. But just on the surface, I feel like Caesar won, but maybe it's just because I don't get, the, you know, it's close. I, I can't really pick a winner, and I know that's kind of a cop-out answer, but let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below. Let me know what else we, I missed. Let's have a conversation about Shaka. Talk about why he was uh, as re remembered as, as prominently as he is. Of course, we all know Caesar's story, but let's talk a little more, more about Shaka. Maybe we'll even do some more uh, videos on him and on the Zulu at some point. It's a period in history that I'm kind of interested in. I just watched Zulu and Zulu Dawn in the last couple of weeks. Great movies for their time uh, that tell an interesting and a forgotten part of history. So uh, hit that like button. I put the link in the description to the original video so you make sure to go over and check them out and give them a like as well. Thanks for watching.